This is going to be the next episode of Deep and Secret Things. And this is going to be about, can Satan hear your thoughts? Can he hear your thought life? Can he read your mind? The ability to read a man's mind completely is only a bit, an ability that God has. In Psalm 94, 11, it says, The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. In Genesis 6, 5, it says, And God saw that the wicked, wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. In Matthew 9, 4, it says, And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore thank ye evil in your hearts. You talk about proof of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ knew man's thoughts before he was even in his glorified body. Jesus was God manifest Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. But how about the devil? When we pray, can he hear what we are saying on the inside? If we pray on the inside, just in our mind, does he hear what we are thinking in any given situation? Does he hear what I'm thinking in, in my dealings with people? Does he hear what I'm thinking on a day-to-day -day basis just throughout my life? Well, I don't believe he can read our mind. I believe he comes really close because of these reasons I'm going to tell you about. Number one, his experience. He comes really close to being able to know what you're thinking completely and being able to read your mind because of his experience. If you have a Bible, you know that he's at the beginning of the book and he's in the last chapter, close to the last chapter of the end of the book, third to the last chapter. He has seen man's history play out before his serpent eyes. In Job 1.7, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And in 1 Peter 5.8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So the devil is walking around. All throughout history, he's been walking around, getting involved in the affairs of men. They say the only thing that men learn from history is that men never learn from history. However, the devil has learned from history, and he knows history better than any history major. He has seen church history play out before his very eyes. By his experience, he knows man's works, how man thinks, and how to trip up the greatest Christian men throughout history. The devil can't read your mind, but he, through experience... He knows what you're probably thinking in any given situation. The next step you're, you're going to take, he knows it. How to make you tick, he knows it. He isn't fooled by anything you're doing. However, you are fooled by him. In 2 Corinthians 2.11, it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The devil knows your pattern, your routine. He also knows one of the best ways to trip you up is to get you out of that routine. You'll find that one of the ways the devil gets you to backslide is a simple change in your daily pattern. If you know by experience a new job, a new friend, a new hobby, or anything, if you change your pattern, maybe you have a certain time that you read the Bible, a certain time that you uh, pray or study, a new pattern, if he can put a new pattern in there, he can get you to quit doing those things. He can't read your mind, but he knows from experience what you're probably thinking, how you think about a certain event. The devil can't be everywhere at once like God can. But I believe the devil himself personally bothers each and every Christian in this world at one time or another personally. Because 1 Peter 5, 8 says he is your adversary. It isn't just his minions that are attacking us. I believe the devil will attack you personally if you are a saint, especially if you're somebody that's trying to do something for God. I believe the devil himself will attack you. And he knows from the experience of dealing with man through all throughout history what you're probably thinking and what, you're gonna, what your next move's going to be. So he knows from experience what you're probably thinking. He can't read your mind, but he knows from experience what's going on in your head. Number two, his expertise. 
He gets close to being able to read your mind because of his expertise. Have you ever heard of a human lie detector test? There are people in this world with wisdom and experience dealing with people, and they can tell when a man is bluffing or being deceitful. Maybe they've worked in so many interrogation rooms that they can tell by a man's facial expression or even his eye movements when a man is telling the truth or when he's telling a lie. Don't forget the devil's expertise. You know what it is. In John eight forty four, it says, You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. If anyone knows when a person is lying, it's the devil. He's the father of lies. He may not be able to read your mind, but he knows when you're lying. Look at what God told Eve in Genesis 2.17. It says, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. That's what God said to Eve. But look what the devil told Eve in Genesis 3 and verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So you see how he told her the complete opposite thing of what God said. That's his expertise He's the father of lies. If anybody knows a liar, it's another liar. The devil is the father of lies. He can tell when you're lying. He may not be able to read your mind, but he can tell when you're lying. He, he can read your face. He can read the sound in your voice. He doesn't know every thought like the Lord does, but he can get close to knowing what's on your mind. When you tell a lie, it makes him happy. Even if nobody else knows that it was a lie, when you tell a lie to your friends, your family, your parents, your your husband or wife, you may be the only one that knows you're lying, but God and the devil both know that you're lying. So he gets close to being able to read your mind because of his experience in dealing with man. He gets close to being able to read your mind because of his expertise is he's a liar, and man is a liar. The Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar. He knows man. Man's a liar. And number three, his education makes him get close to being able to know everything that you're thinking. His education, specifically when it comes to the Bible itself. I don't have any verses for it, but I guarantee you, the devil has the Bible memorized. I mean, you hear about people with a photographic memory. They can look at something and they know what it says without even spending time on it. And the devil is way beyond man. Even the angels are greater in power and might than man. The devil can probably just look at the Bible, know what it says, he's got it. And Ezekiel 28.3 says, Behold, talking about the devil, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. You think... That you got things hid, God knows and the devil knows. You think that you're alone when you're doing those wicked things. But God sees you, the devil sees you, angels see you, unclean spirits see you. You're never really alone. There are people who, but there are people who have memorized the entire New Testament. So it wouldn't be far-fetched to think the devil could read it a few times and have it memorized from cover to cover. Not to mention he's been at this for 6,000 years. He was there when they were actually writing the original copy. I mean, he's seen it. We do know he knows about the Bible because of Revelation 12, 12 says, He knoweth he hath but a short time. So if, he's, if he hadn't read the Bible, how would he know this? The thing about the Bible is that it has man nailed down. The Bible knows man. So if the devil knows the Bible... The devil knows man. The Bible knows you so much it can be described as if you are looking at yourself in a mirror as you read it. The only book that you can read that as you read it, it reads you. In James 1, 23 through 25, it says, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this, this man shall be blessed in his deed. But it, So it said, He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. When you read the Bible... 
You're like a, you, it's like holding a mirror and it's just telling you exactly what you are. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Man at his best state is altogether vanity. There is none righteous, no, not one. It says ye being evil. It calls man evil. It calls man a sinner. Solomon said, There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. If the devil knows the Bible, if he's got an education in the Bible, he knows man. And I believe he knows it a lot better than me and you. So then the devil knows man so well that he knows his next move and he can make a good guess about what you're thinking in any given situation because of he knows man so well. The devil is so close to being able to read your mind because of his education in the scriptures. So it's because of his experience with man, his expertise, which is lying, and man is a liar, and because of his education in the scriptures. Next, it's because he is extraterrestrial. And you say, well, I thought that was, was aliens. Well, well, it is, but in 1 Corinthians fifteen forty, it says there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. If me and you have terrestrial bodies, this would mean the devil is an extraterrestrial. This means in his natural state, he's you know he's outside of our atmosphere. Even though he fell way back in the beginning as the anointed cherub, he fell. He still has access to God because he's the accuser of the brethren. He approaches God and accuses accuses us to God. And the devil and lying spirits still have direct access to God to accuse the brethren, just like they did in Job chapter 1 and 2. I'm sure you've read that, how Satan and the sons of God, they appear to God to accuse Job. They accuse the saints. Revelation 12.10 calls him the accuser of the brethren. Daniel was one of the greatest prayer warriors in the Bible. And there is a story in Daniel 10 about Daniel praying, and when those prayers went up, the devil tried to stop the prayers. And he, he heard the prayers, he tried to stop the prayers. In Daniel 10.12, it says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words." This is an angel from God that was sent to Daniel. He came to get those words. But look what happened in verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So Michael, the archangel, helped this angel against the prince of the kingdom of Persia, an evil spirit who was behind the kingdom of Persia, which is most likely the devil. So when you pray, you see it goes straight up to the throne. And the accuser or accusers of the brethren, they can hear it. And back in the Old Testament, they could even withstand it. And they didn't have to read anybody's mind to do it. We have an advantage over Daniel and the people in the Old Testament in that the devil can't withstand our prayers because we have the blood of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus, our prayers just go straight up. The devil can't stop your prayers. Right now, Satan, the devil in his natural state, is Leviathan, up in those great deeps. We read about in Job 41. And he still has access to go in there and talk to God. And when your prayers go up, he can hear them. As someone with... The, the access to places we don't have, he hears a lot about what we don't hear. He hears what we don't hear. While he can't read your mind, he gets pretty close. Now, he's, he gets close to reading your mind by experience, by his expertise, by his education, because he's extraterrestrial. He's got some abilities we don't have. He can go to places that me and you can't get to. And number five, because of eavesdropping. You remember, he's walking about seeking whom he may devour. He's a serpent. He's slithering around. He's invisible, so you can't see him. He appears as an angel of light. So for this reason, he can eavesdrop. 
He's very nosy. He's very uh, interested in what man's doing. He is very in the know. He has a hand in churches. He has a hand in the music industry. He has a hand in the Bible version committees. He has a hand in Hollywood. He has a hand in religion, in your marriage, your children. And he has innumerable other little henchmen sticking their fingers where they don't belong and listening. And in Ecclesiastes 10.20, it says, Curse not the king, nor not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. That's where you get the saying, a little bird told me. And birds, it says, a bird of the air. The devil is the prince of the power of the air. And birds, specifically unclean birds in the Bible, are like unclean spirits. You know, Babylon... And Revelation, was, it says it's the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Doctrinally, the, uh, this verse in Ecclesiastes 10.20 takes you to the tribulation. And the king would be the Antichrist. And he's going to know who is cursing him behind closed doors. It says, For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall t- tell the matter. It's going to be like that Orwell- Orwellian nightmare, as they call it. You're going to have no privacy. Not only is it going to be uh, spiritual and that you can't get by with anything, but there's also going to be so much surveillance, most likely. And I mean, you already see that in the TVs or in, 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 the, in the smartphones where you got constantly somebody spying on you, hearing what you're saying. And you think that you're alone, but you're never really alone. There's always somebody listening. There's somebody listening. I'm alone right now, but I'm not really alone. There's somebody listening to me right now. There's spirit world out there. And even when you're alone, there's someone eavesdropping. And you're, you're never more yourself than when you're alone. So the devil and unclean spirits through eavesdropping on your conversations with your husband or your wife or your children or your lover that you're having an affair with, the unclean spirits, they hear that, and they know more about you than the average person who sees you every day. They can't read your mind, but they know you pretty well. They get pretty close through eavesdropping. They're sneaky. Uh, they like gossip. They'll that, that says it will tell the matter. They'll find a way to get your deepest, darkest secrets out there and ruin you. And all your deep, dark secrets, they're, they're going to come out. You're not getting by with anything. Your sin's going to find you out. So they get pretty close to reading your mind through eavesdropping, through experience, their expertise. They know man because they, they're like man and that they're liars. And man is a liar. Their education. And next... They get close to reading your mind. The devil gets pretty close to reading your mind because of entering open doors. In Ephesians 4.27, it says, Neither give place to the devil. The devil doesn't know how to read your mind because he can, because he's like God or anything. He's not like God. He's not even close to being like God. So he can't read your mind. Uh, God can read every single thought you're having. He can pull it back, a uh, thought you had 20 years ago. He can pull that back up and, and show it to you. Uh, he knows everything every single person in this world is thinking. The devil can't do that. God is everywhere at once. The devil can't do that. But he can put thoughts in your mind. And if he put a thought in your mind, then he knows you're thinking that. He knows you're thinking that thought. Therefore, he can read your mind in that instance if and if you give him place then he can even fill your heart with things and then he'll know what's on your heart without being able to have the ability to read your mind in matthew 13 and 19 it says when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart this is he which receives seed by the wayside The devil can go in there and catch away something. 
that was sown in someone's heart. And you know the story about how he got in Peter's mind and caused him to tell Jesus that he wouldn't be crucified for our sins. In Matthew 16, 21 through 23, it says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go to, unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. What he's saying is against Scripture there. And so the Lord, it says, but he turned. The Lord turns and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So the devil was able to get into Peter's head and make him say that. In that instance, the devil knew what, what Peter was saying. So the, uh, the father of lies filled Peter's head in that instance. And then you, know, you see how the father of lies filled the heart of Ananias and Sapphira. In Acts 5.3 it says, But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? He filled their heart. He put some thoughts in their mind. And they went ahead and went through with what he was putting in their mind. See, the devil can put all kinds of thoughts in your mind, and it's up to you what you're going to do with those thoughts. You can either plead the blood of Jesus, say, Jesus, help me, or you can give in to what the devil's telling you to do. And I believe each and every single day the devil is trying to get in your mind, no matter who you are, if you're living clean or if you're living, especially if you're living dirty. But even if you're living clean, he's... He's going to try to make you start living dirty. He put something in the heart of Judas that led him to betray Jesus. In John 13, 2, it says, And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, he put the thought of betraying Jesus in the heart of Judas Iscariot. Each and every day, the devil's trying to put something in your heart to make you want to betray Jesus, to make you want to betray the Bible and what you've been taught, and deliberately go against what, the, what you know the Bible says. Anytime you have thoughts about quitting, this is from the devil. The devil puts you in your mind that you might as well just go ahead and quit. In 2 Timothy 2, 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. God says endure hardness. That's the opposite of quitting. You don't quit. God wants you to endure. Thoughts of quitting is a thought from the devil. Any thoughts of defeat come from the devil because the Bible says you're a winner if you're saved. In 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Any thoughts that you have lost your salvation would come from the devil. Because Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. If you lose, if, if you sin and lose your salvation right now, then you, then that makes God a liar because you're not sealed unto the day of redemption. But you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You can't lose your salvation over anything that you do. But the devil will put that in your mind that you've lost your salvation. Don't even worry about trying to serve God anymore. Just give up. You're defeated. Just go ahead and quit. All of these thoughts are thoughts that come from the devil because he wants you to quit trying to live clean and live dirty. This is spiritual warfare here. And he comes at you in your thoughts. Any thoughts... That God is just done with you and that God doesn't want to talk to you. If you keep, th if you, every time you go to pray, if you think, why well, am I even praying? God doesn't want to hear from me or talk to me. That is completely from the devil. That's a complete lie of the devil because in 1 John 1 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. James 4 8 says, Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purif purify your hearts, you double-minded. It says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. It says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us our sins. If maybe you've been backslid for three years, for ten years, 
If you came to God right now in prayer and said, God, I'm sorry, I want to get back with you and serve you, he's right there, and he wants that more than you do. He's not up there saying, I'm not listening to him, I'm not talking to him. He wants to have something to do with you. He's not like your deadbeat dad. He's not like your deadbeat mother that doesn't want to have anything to do with you. He wants to have something to do with you a lot more than you want to have something to do with him. But this is how the devil works. He uses the tools of discouragement, and he always speaks contrary to what God says. So can the devil read your mind? He can't read your mind, but because of his experience with man, his expertise in lying and man's a liar, his education in the scriptures, his eavesdropping, and all of these things, his entering open doors that you leave open, this is how he's got to a point where he can't read your mind, but he can get pretty close. And he can put thoughts in your mind and in that instance know what you're thinking. And he's going to put thoughts in your mind to make you want to give up and to make you want to quit. And that's when you just cling to what the Bible says. And the more you know about the Bible, the more you can identify the lies of the devil. The more you know about the Bible, the more you won't be ignorant of his devices. So I hope this has encouraged you and made you think, made you see that the Bible is a very interesting book. That's my main Burden. I want to get people interested in the Bible because people think the Bible is boring. And I find that the deep and secret things get people interested in the Bible. So this has been Can Satan Hear Your Thoughts?